When you take your CCO specialty exam, you're likely to see eight low chart problems. 26 total problems, eight of those are going to be what we call low chart problems. Those low chart problems are for the most part going to be divided between two types of low chart problems, gross load problems and net capacity problems, with net capacity problems being the most common type that you will see. What I want to do in this tutorial is uh, show you the steps involved in solving a basic uh, net capacity problem. Uh, there are some other variations that I will show you in some other videos. Again, this is the basic problem. There's not really any twists or curveballs with this particular problem. Uh, first thing we want to do is write out our formula for net capacity. And I am abbreviating here. NC for net capacity equals GC, our gross capacity, minus our deductions. Uh, gross capacity, that's not necessarily going to be the chart capacity. This is an important point. Uh, and I will have another problem that really hits upon this point. So. But uh, I do want to I do want to share this with you now. Gross capacity is going to be the lesser of chart capacity or the line capacity or the line pull. So we, we will at some point want to find the chart capacity and the line capacity. Then once we have those two values, that the lesser of these two, that's what we're going to plug into the formula for gross capacity. And gross capacity is the lesser of chart capacity or line capacity. Let's go ahead and, and draw out our configuration. First of all, outriggers are full. Counterweight, not applicable. Main boom, 110 feet, mode B. Go ahead and make me a big diagram here because I got a lot of stuff to fit into it. In fact, let me, uh, let me do something here. Let me give myself even more room to work. And when, when you're working these problems out on your scrap paper, whatever they provide to you for working out your problems, for, for doing your calculations, you use the big diagram. Big diagrams are easier to work with. Let me go ahead and draw in my radius. And let's... And I got kind of a squiggly line there. Hopefully your booms aren't that uh, squiggly, but if they are, I uh, probably shouldn't be using that crane. 110 feet, mode B, and a radius is 65 feet. And we have an auxiliary boom head. And we have a 34 foot jib that's stowed on the boom. We have a 40 ton block reeved with four parts of line and it's hanging 12 feet below the main. Let's go ahead and draw that in. And I'm, I'm making this line here extra long so I have room to, to get everything in. And that's this drawing is not to scale, of course. Um, so we got four, four parts of line, and I like to use a 4x to, as a reminder that I've got four parts of line. And we got a 40 ton block. And let's let's talk some more about this. We got 40 ton, four parts, 12 feet below main. That 12 feet below main tells us that the block is just hanging there, it's not in use. The lift is going to be taking place off the auxiliary head. They're going to be lifting off, picking off the auxiliary head using a single part line and the eight and a half ton headache ball. So uh, but we, we do need to account for these four parts of line. That is a deduction, these four parts of line that are hanging. 
to find the, the value for that deduction. Four parts of line multiplied by the 12 feet that's hanging. Then the line weighs one pound per foot. So we end up with four times 12 is 48 times one. We have a 48 pound deduction for the wire rope that's hanging off the main. Uh, let's see, eight and a half ton at the auxiliary head. Eight and a half ton ball at the auxiliary head. And we've got 30 pounds of rigging. Again, we know the lift is taking place off the auxiliary head because of this information here. It tells us 12 feet below the main boom. 12 feet of line hanging below the main, main boom. That's our, that's our indicator that we're lifting off of the auxiliary in this particular problem. So well, we're going to put our rigging off of our ball. And it tells us that we have 30 pounds of rigging. So we're going to deduct that. Okay, now these other components are 34 foot jib that's stowed. We need to go to page five of our low chart document. And here are the values, 34 foot stowed, 900, and we have auxiliary head, 150. And I should be putting these in red to indicate that they're deductions, but not a major deal. You're not going to be using colored pencils when you take your test. Uh, but everything that I'm lining up over on the right hand side, these are deductions. Last, actually, we got two more. We have the eight and a half ton ball. Three sixty. And we have a 40 ton block. Seven twenty. And like I've said in previous videos, you're gonna remember these, a lot of these numbers because of your practice, but look them up every time. Looking them up every time can help prevent a mistake. Uh, you might, you know, anybody's, anybody's potentially prone to making a mistake, remembering something incorrectly. So uh, go ahead and look it up every time. You will have plenty of time on the exam. Uh, see, let's make sure we got everything. We've got our auxiliary boom head counted for. We've got our 34 foot stowed. We've got our 40 ton block. We've got the four parts of line that's hanging. We've got eight and a half ton at the auxiliary head, eight and a half ton ball, 360. Then we've got a rigging. So that's going to be it for our deductions. Let's go ahead and bring up the calculator and total these up. Plus 150, 360, plus 48. If I did that correctly, our deductions are 22, or total for our deductions, 2,208 pounds. And that's what we're going to plug into our formula up here, 2,200 and eight pounds for our deductions. Last thing we need to do is determine what our gross capacity is. Again, it's going to be the lesser of the chart capacity or the line capacity. So let's find the chart capacity. To find our chart capacity, we're gonna to go to the chart for 110 foot of boom in mode B and 65 foot radius. And here's the chart we need. Um, Boom mode B, 110 feet. This is all we need right here. You can ignore 105 and 95 feet. 
we're 110 foot length, we're right here. Also, we're, we're wanting to find the net capacity when we are operating uh, 360 degree uh, uh, area of operation. We have 360 degrees, our area of operation. So 110 foot of boom, we wanna be in the 360 degree column, this column right here. Now we go over here and find our load radius in feet, it's 65. So there it is right there. See if I can highlight some of this. There we go. Okay, 65 foot radius and 110 foot, 360 degrees. Ignore the 11,200. That's our capacity if we're over the front. If our range of operation is limited to over the front, we have 11,2 capacity but we want three net capacity for 360 degrees of operation, so 10,200. That is our chart capacity. Now what is our line capacity? We're talking about the line capacity uh, off the auxiliary head with a single part of a line. Single part of line. Oh, here we go. Uh, parts of line, one, 12,000. 920 is the line pull with a single part of a line. 12,920. And that's for a single part of a line. So our gross capacity is the lesser of the chart capacity or the line capacity. The lesser is the chart capacity. 10,200. Now there will be problems that you will see on the exam where the line capacity is less than the chart capacity. If that's if your line capacity is less than the chart capacity, then line capacity or line pull is what you use for your gross capacity. And I'll, I'll have another tutorial where that is the case just to show you what that might look like. But we have our gross capacity, we have our deductions, one last calculation and we will have our net capacity 360 degrees with 110 foot of boom and a 65 foot radius. Ten thousand two hundred minus twenty two oh eight seven thousand nine hundred and ninety two is our net capacity. Go over here to our answer options and there 7,992. And that's it for this problem. Again, pretty straightforward. There are a lot of different components that we had to account for. You might, even, you might see some problems that are simpler than this. Uh, they're straightforward and they don't have as many components. Um, but you, you're probably gonna see a problem like this also. Um, one thing I, I need to say about the answer options uh, the test designer is very good at coming up with wrong answers that appear to be correct. Wrong answers that appear to be correct. And let me give you an example here. I have an example in these answer options. Let's say we forget to deduct the rigging. If we forget to deduct the rigging, Our deductions are going to go from 2208 to 2178. That's if we forget to deduct the rigging. So if we take this as our deductions, which is the incorrect amount for deductions, and subtract that from 10,200, let's see what we get. Eight thousand twenty-two. Uh, voila! There's eight thousand twenty-two. Which, if you forget to deduct the rigging, and you end up with this as your deductions, you're going to end up with eight thousand twenty-two as your net capacity. And you're going to think that think that's great. There's eight thousand twenty-two. 
but it's it's the wrong answer that looks like it could be a right answer so very important to pay it pay attention to your deductions and not missing any deductions and, and make sure there might also be a there might also be a variation on this where they give you the right answer but you use the wrong or they give you what appears to be a right answer when you use an incorrect gross capacity a lot of different different angles here to pay attention to um, all right i'm going to go ahead and let you go now let me know if you have any questions